Hello, welcome back to Burdu Channel. As you may know, you can create forms on your website pages, for example, for a question box, feedback page, or maybe just a contact form on our contact page. In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a form on your website page, customize its content and appearance, and manage the form submissions data. Before we dive into the video, don't forget to subscribe to the Burdu channel to get updates on other tutorials. Click the like button below and also turn on the notification bell. Firstly, from your website dashboard on Burdu, select the layout menu. You can add this form to the main homepage or on custom pages. Feel free to edit existing pages or create a new one. If you're interested in learning how to build a simple website layout from scratch, you can check out our previous videos. On this page, I'll be adding a data collection form for potential customers who want to inquire about our online classes. Now let's add a section and search for the Collect Data form. In the preview, we can see the default layout of the form, consisting of name, position, message, and submit button. Let's try editing the section name here. We can choose the input form type, such as text. We can also change the title name and its placeholder. A placeholder is the default text that appears in the column before being filled out by the website visitor. Required checkbox means the form filler must complete this section before clicking the submit button. If not checked, it means this section is not mandatory. Click Done. Now let's look at the position section. This section is a selection option type. We can change the default text name. By default, there are three options here. We can add another option, for example, like this. We can see in the preview that one more option has been added. There are a few option designs to choose from. Selections, vertical radio, horizontal radio, or panel. Feel free to choose the one that suits your preference. If you want to provide many options, you can create selection groups for each option. For example, like this. To do this, we add it first in the option selection. Go to the group menu. Add a new group. Here I'll create a group for class categories. Create it according to your needs. Back to input. In this option section, you can specify which options to include in which group. When it's done, it looks like this. Please note that this group is only for ease of selection, especially if there are many options. The group name is not included in the form data. Only the option names are included. Now, let's talk about other designs, for example, vertical and horizontal radios. Please note that for radio design, the group name will not be displayed. So this group name is displayed specifically for selection design only. The same goes for the panel. The group name won't appear. For radio and panel designs, you can customize their appearance too. Now you can make changes here. For example, radio color, so the radio is a small circle that appears on one of the options selected by the website visitor. You can change its color here. For example, you can change the active panel background, active panel border, and panel background. Feel free to follow the settings I'm demonstrating, or explore your own settings according to your website theme. Okay, this is how it looks. Then let's talk about the default part. So, the default is the option that is automatically selected when this page is opened. It can be selected as None, the first option, and so on, according to your needs. Once it's done, don't forget to click Done. Next, let's discuss the next default sections, which are the message sections with long text type. This section is needed so that website visitors can give messages in the form of questions about the classes they want to take. So we just need to change the name and placeholder. Click Done. You can add another section if needed, simply by adding a section and choosing its type. Here, there are many types you can use. For example, because I want to add an email section, I'll choose the email type. 
or you can choose phone if the input section you want to add is a phone number. Counter, rating, and many other types are available. You can even use an image type, which allows website visitors to upload images needed, such as personal data, and so on. I'll revert to email and change its name and placeholder. Click Done and drag this email section up until its position is below the name section. Please add another input section as needed, for example, a WhatsApp number input. Don't forget to change its type to phone. OK, now let's move on to button settings. Let's edit this Submit button. When the button is clicked, there are three options to choose from. Submit to WhatsApp, Insert into Google Sheets, or Insert into Burdu. Please select the data form, and you can create a new one if it hasn't been created yet. And feel free to change the button's design. Click Done. After the website visitor submits this form, there must be some sort of thank you message or automatic message displayed. We can create this message in the settings for the submitted data. Let's review it in the submitted condition. This is how the form looks after the website visitor clicks the Submit button. You can change the message here by editing the text. You can also change the font type, size, and even text color if you want. Or if you want the website visitor to be directed to another page after clicking Submit, you can check the box in the Redirect After Submit section and specify the target. It can be a local page, WhatsApp, Telegram, etc. Once it's done, don't forget to click Done, Done, and Save. Now let's see the form we just created. It looks like this. Now open a new tab and go to your website dashboard on Burdu. Go to Reports, Data Form, and here's the form we created earlier. Let's see. OK, there is no form data filled in here yet because the form hasn't been filled out yet. Let's go to Settings first, then add a new status. The label colors for each status can be changed according to your needs. Please select the default status among the new statuses we just created, or you can choose none. But this time, I'll choose awaiting follow-up as the default status. This default status means the status of each data that comes in before you make manual changes. Click Save. Don't close this tab yet. Now let's go back to the Form tab. Let's fill in the data. Assume this form is also being filled out and submitted by several other people, so there will be a lot of incoming data submission. Click Submit. As you can see, after clicking Submit, the thank you message we created earlier will appear here. Now let's go back to our Form Data Admin tab. Check the data and refresh the page. This is the form data filled out by web page visitors. All the data is here along with the details of their product options. If the default status was none earlier, then there won't be any status shown here. But because the default status was awaiting follow-up, it's displayed here. Let's say one of the form data status needs to be changed. Select that data. Click Change Status. Choose the status, for example, Followed Up. OK, the status has been changed, and the label color follows our previous choice. OK, that's all for this tutorial. Like this video, Leave a comment below and subscribe to the Burdu channel for more tutorial videos. Don't forget to follow our social media accounts for more interesting content. See you next time!